Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop overlay video, we'll be overlaying a nice cloudy sky in here on top of this picture. Here's the original. There we go, pretty bad. And here it is with a new sky overlaid on top of the old sky. It takes just a few steps, just a few layers to do this. Let's go ahead now and see how this is done. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you click on the like button and that you also subscribe to my channel. And if you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop, take a look at my complete Photoshop training and you'll find a link for that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Making this Photoshop overlay requires just a few layers, a few little tricks in here to pull this off. It's not that difficult and let's just start from the beginning in here. I'll close this one down. Here's the original picture. Now there's one step that I've done ahead of time in here and that is to create a path around my figure. Let me show you that path. I'll grab the direct selection tools, click on the path. There we go. There's the path that I made. I made this path using the pen tool and with the pen tool of course you click for points and you click and drag to create curves. We can then use this path to make a selection. We'll be doing that twice in this video so having the path makes this very easy. Plus, the nice thing about having a path is if we zoom in here, you can see that we have all of our points and I can click on any one of these, change its position and change the curves and angles and so forth in here so I can get an absolutely perfect path right where I want it around my figure and then use that to make my selections. Okay, that's the first part is to go ahead and make your path. Now, if you haven't used a path to make a selection before, I have a video just on how to do this and you'll find the link for that video in the description. Okay, so make your path first. Once that's done, click outside here so that's unselected. Let's close down the path and we're back to our image. Now we need to clean the picture up. I'll zoom in here. You can see right back there is a guy kind of hiding in behind there. We need to fix that. And on the right hand side over here, there is something else that somebody tried to fix on this side as well. I found this picture on the internet and that's the kind of thing that you find sometimes are these kind of incomplete fixes. So I'll start off by getting rid of those two spots in here. Now I'll do that with the clone stamp tool but first let's make a new layer and I'll call this one the fix layer. So our fixes will be on this one layer up here. That way we don't touch the original. I never touch my original background image I'll always do all of my fixes and everything else on other layers just in case things go wrong. I can always go back to my clean layer right there. Okay, we'll start off now with the polygonal lasso tool right here. And I'll make a selection right around there. Just a protection selection to protect the figure. So I'll start out here someplace and then we'll come in right against the edge of the girl's shoulder here and just make a careful little selection and just follow right along. Now be careful with this, don't you know, don't make a bad selection. Take your time and make a good selection. And then up around the hat. And then out and around like that and then back to the beginning again. There we go. So there's our selection. Let's now go to the clone stamp tool. See there's my brush size right there. Right now I have my brush set at about 15. So it's a soft edge brush, 15, opacity is 100%, everything else is at the defaults. Let's go to the background layer, and I'll hold the Alt key down and grab right on the horizon, right over here. Just click there, let go, and you can see there's my horizon line in that paintbrush. Let's go up to our fixed layer, and I'll clone onto the fixed layer. So I'm cloning from the background layer onto the fixed layer, and I should be able to just get rid of this whole person here without any issues just like this. And there we go. And he's gone. Alright, let's deselect. We'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So back to our polygonal lasso tool. I'll hold the space bar down. Let's just pull the picture over here to the right. Exact same thing right here. So again, I'll just come around the shoulder and carefully kind of just right along the edge there. And it's a bit further on. And then out and around like that. Making a nice little protection area. 
Back to the clone stamp tool, leave all the settings the same. Back to the background layer. And I'll come out over here, hold the Alt key down and click right on the horizon. Just like that, back to our fixed layer. And then put that horizon right there to fix that, a little bit in the sky, a little bit down here in the water, fixes that. And we kind of duplicated that spot from here to here. I want to get rid of that. So back to our background, auto scrap something right here. Back to the fixed layer, and we'll just get rid of that. Okay, and then deselect. There we are. Let's go back to our fit on screen view. And that gets rid of those two problems. So the background is now clean up, the picture is clean. We now can begin to work on putting in our effects. The next thing to do is to bring our sky picture in here. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'll hold the Alt key down and zoom out one notch like that. And let's bring in the sky picture. Now, there's a link for this picture and the sky picture in my video support page. And you'll find that link in the description if you want to download these pictures to match this video. Okay, file. I have mine here in my recent file list. There it is. Now this is the same size as this picture. So you can just drag it in. There we go. And let's close this down just like that. Okay, so there's our picture. Now I want to kind of squeeze this down a little bit. So I'll hold the control and then hit the T key. It gives me our, my control handles. Grab the top middle one. Just pull this down like that. Kind of squish it down a bit. And then pull this straight up. You see, here's our horizon. I want to have this coming down just, just over that horizon, just about there. And then with the clouds, I want to have the tops of the clouds just cutting the top of the picture. So I'll just drag this up again, just like that, just kind of cutting the tops of the, of the picture there. What that does is it puts most of the clouds behind that umbrella with some of the clouds showing. It just looks good at that position. Okay, click on the check mark to set that in place. So there's the first part of the overlay, looks pretty bad right now. So we need to put a layer mask on here with a gradient to blend into this picture from our original sky. So let's do a layer mask, layer mask button. There we are. Now I have my foreground at black, background at white. Let's go to the gradient tool. And it's black to white. I'm on the linear gradient, which is our first gradient here. Come down just below that horizon, just, just barely below the horizon. Hold the shift key down and then pull up a little bit like that. And that gives us a little fast gradient in here so that the sky now blends into the original horizon line right down there. So that's what you want to do. So we have our original horizon line and then our sky kind of blending in like that. If you want to have more sky, just do a shorter gradient. If you want to have more of the original, do a longer gradient. I kind of like this amount. It's just about, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch pull on this one to get that level. It just kind of fades the sky out to that nice horizon down there. Okay, but as you can see, it's also blocking our figure. So we need to fix the layer mask up here to allow the figure to show through. This is the first use for that path that we set up at the beginning of the project. So let's click on our work path. See, there's the path grab the direct selection tool. I'm going to click on the path so you can see that. There it is. And then right click inside of that path. And up here near the top we have make selection. Click on that. I have my feather radius set at 1. It just kind of softens the edge down on that selection. Choose OK. And there's a nice selection for us. OK. Let's just collapse the paths down. And make sure we're on the sky layer here. And we have our gradient the layer mask over there it's selected. Now black hides, white shows. I want to hide the skies. I want to paint black into this area. So I got the paintbrush. We're on black. This is set at about 70 right now. Soft edge and 70. Opacity is 100. I'm just going to paint right along the path in there and just fill in the inside of the path. I only have to go down just to the horizon because below that the sky is hidden anyway. So I'll just come in here and paint along this. Now the reason why I'm using the paintbrush to do this instead of the paint bucket to fill this is because of that gradient. If I use the paint bucket, it would only fill to where it was matching the level of the gradient that I was clicking on. So it would be up here real nice and kind of stop. 
and I'd click in here, I, I begin getting banding down here on that. It's just faster using the paintbrush to just paint this in instead of trying to use that paint bucket just because we're doing it on top of that existing gradient. So there we go. Looks like we can now go ahead and deselect that. And there's the figure with the sky in the background overlaid on top of the original sky. Now we can still make this a bit better by improving the contrast here of our figure making the picture a little bit more punchy than it is. Now to do that one, let's go to the background layer. I'll pull this down to the new layer button making a copy of that. Let's now reselect this. So back up to path. Make sure the work path is selected like that. Let's go back to the direct selection tool. Click on your path so you can see it. There it is. Right click inside of the path. Click on make selection. Leave all that as is. There's our selection. Now this time we're on our background copy layer. We're not bothering with that gradient. We're off of that layer. So I can just click the layer mask button and that gives me a layer mask that matches our selection, which is the girl and the umbrella. Now we can do an adjustment layer on this layer and adjust the values in here for the girl's figure. You can also hide that path at that point. There we are. And let's zoom in just a bit here, fit on screen, easier to see. There we go. Okay, layer, new adjustment layer. I like using levels. Now where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, check that and choose OK. That will keep it inside of just this one layer. And here we have our blacks and our whites and the mid-tone values. I'll bring the blacks up a little bit, just kind of darkens the darks down. You can see it right in here mostly. Notice how I'm rocking this back and forth. This way I can see what the effect is. And I want to come in just, I'm beginning to darken down those those darks, but not much further than that. So about there looks pretty good, about a 16. On the right hand side, this lightens the whites. Now it's mostly in here in the hat. You can see right there. If I go too far, it begins to burn out like that, so you don't want to do that. I want to come in just a little bit. I want to brighten things up, get it more contrasty, without losing very much detail in the top of the hat. So it's a real small amount up here. Just a little bit is all you need. Looks pretty good right there, about 242. And then if you move the middle control here to the right a little bit, we can darken the values down, kind of increases the quality of the values, kind of the saturation of our colors in there. So just a little bit to the right, about like an 80, 82 in there somewhere. And that increases the look, increases our contrast, makes the picture a bit more punchy and just a little bit nicer looking. And there we go. So we've now overlaid the sky on top of the old sky and made a much better picture. Let's go ahead and compare this. I'll take the background layer, drag it down to the new layer button. There we are. Let's take this and put it up to the top. So there's the original. There's the guy. A little problem over there. Bad sky. Let's hide that. And there's our fix. So original and fix. And I think you'll agree, much better picture now without that much actual work to do. It really just clean the picture up, fix the sky, and then clean up the values. So there you go. That is the Photoshop overlay sky effect. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. 